Great. So today you guys are going to talk about bisectors and bisectors. If you think about a bicycle, it has two wheels. So a bisector is going to make two equal parts. So one more time. A bisector cuts something in half and it makes equal parts. So a bisector cuts something in half and makes equal parts. So for example, if you had this triangle and you bisected this top angle up here, your two angles would be equal. So this line would be called a bisector. And then these two parts would be equal. One more thing that you're gonna need later on is I just wanna remind you of the Pythagorean theorem. which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then remember that deals with a right triangle and I'm gonna draw two of them just to remind you. The segment across from the 90 degrees is your c and then you can interchange the other two. It doesn't matter which one you label a or b. So again, the only one that matters is the one across from the, the 90 degree, and that will be your C value. So I know there are a lot of questions. There's like 30 of them, but we're not gonna go all, over all of them. Um, most of them are exactly the same. So when we look at this first example, it says that E, G, F is what we wanna find. So go around E, G, F, is this full angle right here. So we want all of that if one is 18. Now your direction says each figure shows a triangle with one of its angle bisectors. So that means it cuts that angle in half. So if this half is 18, the other half is 18. And then we just add those up to get the full angle. So 18 plus 18 is 36. On the next one, we're looking for B, X, W. B, X, W, if we follow it around, is the full angle again, just like this last one. It tells us that angle two is 30. Since it's a bisector, it made equal parts. And then to get the full, we're gonna add it together. 30 plus 30 equals 60. On the next one, U, W, V, U, W, V, the whole angle this time is 58, and it wants to know what this number one is. So remember that this line bisects or cuts in half. So if we bisect, or cut this total angle in half, we will get that each part is 29. Okay, same thing on the next one. V, T, U, that's what we're trying to find, the whole angle. We have half of it is 38. So that means the other part is 38. And to get the full angle, we just add it together. You can also multiply by two. So 38 plus 38, four. You can do two times 38, which will still give you 76. It's up to you whichever way you would like to do it. Look at your next one. It says find D, B, C, which is the full angle. If angle two is 12. So that means angle one is 12 as well. So we can do two times 12, or you can do 12 plus 12, which is 24. Again, it doesn't take very long at all. 
Number six, it gives you the angle one is 35 and they want you to find FDE. So follow it around, FDE is the full angle. So to find the full angle, we're gonna multiply by two and that gives us 70. On number seven, same thing, angle two is 23. It wants D, F, E, so the full angle. So we'll just do 23 times two, which is 46. This one says X, Z, Y, the full angle is 82. So how do I find part of it? Remember an angle bisector cuts it in half. So we would get 41. So there's your first page, pretty simple. Nine and 10 are basically the same. So we're gonna quickly do nine and 10 and then we'll move on to something a little more complicated. It is the same, it just is more in depth with like letters and functions or equations. So angle one is 11 and it wants you to find E, C, D or the full one. So we're gonna do 11 times two. So if they give you one to find the full one, multiply by two. If they give you the full one, we're gonna divide by two. So angle one is 64, find U, W, V. So that's both of them together. So we would multiply by two and we get 128. All right, so now what you'll start seeing is you have an expressions 25x plus one and 52x minus two instead of actual numbers, but it's the same exact way. So it tells you that angle one is 25x plus one. So that's part, so half of it. It tells you H, F, G, the whole angle is 52x minus two. So remember, if we multiply the little angle, so angle one, which is 25x plus one by two, we'll get the big angle, 52x minus two. So I'm gonna go over this again. Angle two is gonna be the same as angle one. So you can either add them. When I add them, I get 50x plus two or I can multiply by two and distribute, which will give me 50X plus two is gonna equal the big or the total angle, 52X minus two. <clears throat> now it's just solving. I teach my kids to subtract the smallest one or to move the smallest one. So your smallest X is 50. Since it's a positive 50, I'm gonna subtract 50. These will cancel out and give me two equals. 52 minus 50 is 2x, and then a minus two. Continue solving, I'm gonna add two to both sides, and I get four equals 2x. And then finish out by dividing by two, and I get that x equals two. If we go back up to our problem, it says to find x. I did that. So I'm finished. Remember, if it asks you to find anything else, it's probably gonna ask you to plug in at some point, then you wanna go ahead and do that. All right, so again, on the next one, angle one is 16X minus one. That means that angle two is also 16X minus one. But the full angle C, A, B is 31X. So again, you can either add these up or multiply one of them by two. We'll go ahead and add them. 16 plus 16 is 32X. Negative one plus negative one is negative two. When I add those, I get my full angle of 31X. Since this X is already by itself, I'm gonna move this 32 over by subtracting it. That'll leave me with negative two equals, 31 minus 32 is negative X. 
to get x by itself, we divide by negative one. And again, we were trying to find x. So x is two. Doing the same thing again, both angles added together. So both parts equal the whole. Add the parts equal the whole. So angle two is eight x, but this one gives you angle one. What do we know about one and two? We know that they're equal. So if they're equal, we can set them equal to each other. Okay, they didn't give us the big one, so we can't add them up. They just gave us the two, so we're gonna set them equal. Since this X is already by itself, I'm gonna subtract nine X. I get negative X equals negative four. And then we're gonna divide by negative one to get that X equals four. It asked me to solve for x, so I'm done with the problem. On this one, it gives me angle two is 4x plus two. It gives me QSR, so the full angle is 9x. So then I can go ahead and fill this in with a 4x plus two. And I get, add them together. The two parts added together, 8x plus 4 is going to give us 9x. We're going to subtract our 8x. And we get 4 equals x. It asks us to find x. So we're done with the problem. So we've done this two ways. You're either setting angle 1 and angle 2 equal, like on this one. So if they only give you the two little angles, set them equal. If they give you the big angle, make sure that you add these two up. They're going to be the same. Add them up and then set it equal to the big angle. So on the next one, they give us the little angle two is 5x plus 4. And they give us the big angle is 12x minus 6. So when they give us the big angle, we want to make sure that we fill in the other little one with the same measure. We add them together. 5x plus 5x is 10x. 4 plus 4 is 8. And we set it equal to the big one, which is 12x minus 6. Your littlest x is 10x. So I'm going to subtract it from each side. I get eight equals two X minus six. We're gonna add six to both sides. Eight plus six is 14 and I'm left with two X. Solve for X by dividing by two and I get X equals seven. We were looking for X, so we're done with this problem. So right now we're halfway done. Not too much longer now. All right, so on this one, if you look, they give us one and two. One and two are the little ones. And we know that the little ones are the same. So we set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna redo it one more time. If they give you the big one, you're gonna add the two little ones and set them equal to the big one. If they give you the two little ones, you just set them equal to each other. Since this X is already over here by itself, I'm going to subtract 37X. I get negative one equals negative X. And then to solve, we divide by negative one and I get X equals one. It told me to find X. So I'm finished with that problem. Give me a second to write it down. And then we're going to flip it over and start on 17. 17 through 20 are basically just like this. So when we look at 17, it gives you the measure of angle two, which is 2x plus two. And it gives you w, u, v, which is the full one. So we need to add the two little ones instead of equal to the big one. 
So remember the two little ones are the same. We're gonna add them up, 4x plus four, set it equal to the big one, 5x minus six. Your littlest x is 4x, so I'm gonna subtract it. I get four equals x minus six. We're gonna add six to both sides. And we get that 10 equals x, and it asks us to find x. So we're done with this problem. On number 18, it gives us angle one is two x plus nine, and angle two is three x. Since it gave us the two little ones, we set them equal to each other. There's no adding to be done because it didn't give us the big one. So two little ones, set them equal to each other. I'm gonna subtract two X. And I get that X equals nine. It was asking me to find X. So I'm done with the problem. On the next one, it gives you your two little ones. I'm gonna go ahead and write it in. 12x plus two and 13x minus one. The two little ones we set equal to each other. My smallest x is 12x, I'm gonna move it. So I'm gonna subtract 12x. I get two equals x minus one. And then I'll add one to both sides. And I get that x equals three. It asked me to find x, so I'm finished with that problem. One more just like that. Angle two is six x plus seven. Angle one is eight x minus one. Since they give us the two little ones, we set them equal to each other. I'm gonna move my smallest x, so I'm gonna subtract six x. And I get seven equals 2x minus one. Solve for x, we're gonna add one. So we get eight equals two x. Divide by two and x equals four. Now the next section is a little bit different and all these figures are really tiny. So I'm gonna write in as best as I can. Um, I'm gonna probably pull the, the triangles out so that you can see them. So each figure shows a triangle with its three angle bisectors intersecting at point P. So if you guys look, you see how we have all of these uh, little boxes. These are perpendiculars. That means that they're 90 degrees. So all of these triangles are right triangles. So this is where we're going to use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So if we look at the first one, it says PW is five and RP is 13. And it wants you to find RW. So I'm gonna pull this one out so you can see it. I'm not gonna do this every single time, but for the first few, I definitely will. I just want you to be able to see it. We have five X and 13. Remember what I told you in the beginning of the notes, the one across from the 90, is always gonna be C. So that's the only one that matters. Everything else is interchangeable. So you could write five squared plus X squared, or you could write X squared plus five squared. Uh, I like to use my X's first. So I'll do X squared plus five squared. So A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay. Five squared is 25. 13 squared is 169. You guys can use your calculators for that. We got to solve for X, so we're going to subtract 25. And we get that X squared equals 144. And then to finish it out, we take the square root. So to get rid of the square, we square root. And the positive square root is 12. Remember when we typically take the square root, we get a positive and a negative. So a positive 12 and a negative 12. But since we're talking about distance, we can't have a negative distance. So you're only focused on the positives right now. Look at your next one. 
we have that ES is one and EP is two. And if you guys look, this little triangle, or not triangle, but this little square is on this side. It's understood that it's on this side as well. So what you have is another little triangle. There's your right angle, one, two, and we're trying to find PS. The only one that matters the order is the one across from the 90. That's gonna be your C. Again, I like to put my X first. So we're gonna do A squared plus B squared. So X squared plus one squared equals two squared. One squared is one and two squared is four. We're gonna solve by subtracting one. We get X squared equals three. And then we're gonna finish by taking the square root. And I get X equals the square root of three. There's nothing that I can do that uh, to that to fix it. That's as small as it gets. If you give me the decimal, that's perfectly fine as well. So uh, if you get a multiple choice, it might give you a decimal. You just plug that into your calculator. So if you're not sure where that's at on your calculator, you would hit second or the blue key and your X squared key. Second and X squared, which will give you the square root and three, and it gives you 1.73. If you give me that, again, that's fine. I just wanna make sure that if they have multiple choice square root of three, that you know what you're doing, okay? Look at your next one. It says PU, that's this little tiny line right here, is 3.32. And E U is five. So I'm gonna redraw that triangle a little bit bigger so we can see it. We get 3.32 and five. Remember the one that matters is the one across from the 90 degrees. So this time they didn't give us C. They give us 3.32, which I'm gonna square plus five squared, and we're looking for C. This one is gonna end up being a decimal. They may round it to the whole number. I want you to give me the decimal. 3.32 squared plus five squared in my calculator is 36.0224. And then to get rid of the square, remember we square root. So that's second X squared and then 36.0224. And we get that C equals 6.002, which they may go ahead and round to or approximate. That's what those little squiggly equal marks mean, approximately six. Look at your next one. These are all exactly the same. PS is one. VP is two. Remember that there's a little 90 degree right there as well. And it wants you to find VS. I'm gonna redraw that triangle. Here's your 90 degrees, one, two, and X. Remember the only one that matters is across from the 90 and that will be your C. So we have X squared, plus one squared equals two squared. If you guys look, we've already done this. It's the same as this one. So I'm not gonna make you do the work. It just comes out to be square root three. Again, it's the same question. Flip your paper. We have six more and we'll be done. And they're all the exact same, just like that. So I'm 25, we're getting smaller. We're looking at this PY, that's what we want. PY, if DY is one and DB is three. So I'm gonna rewrite that triangle a little bit bigger. If you look at Y, there's a 90 degrees. So we're gonna put that 90 right there. And we have X, one and three. 
And remember the only one that matters is across from the 90 degree. So you're gonna do X squared plus one squared equals the three has to be the C squared. We get X squared plus one equals nine. We'll subtract one. Sorry about that. We get X squared equals eight. And then we wanna take the square root. Now, when we square root, if you guys had me for math one, you'll know exactly what I'm doing. If you didn't have me, this is how I break it down. My factors of eight, are four and two or two times two times two. When you're working with square roots to reduce them, you're looking for pairs of numbers. So I had a pair of twos and I left a two. So this is exactly how we simplify. Again, you can also give me the decimal if you'd like, but your multiple choice may not be in decimals. Okay. SF is 12. SP is 13, so remember your right angle is here, and it's looking for PF. I'm sorry, I put PF in the wrong place. PF is the X, SP is 13. So again, the one across from the 90 is gonna be your C. I'm gonna redraw it for you just so you can see it. Your 90 is here, we have X, 12, and 13. So 13 has to be C. The other two de doesn't matter what order. I just like my X's first. X squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared. 12 squared is 144. 13 squared is 169. We're gonna subtract 144 from both sides. And we get that x squared equals 25. To get rid of the square, we square root. And the square root of 25 is five. Again, you can do those in your calculator. Four more. On the next one, it says find PT. So we're looking for PT. If HT is five and HP is six. We're just to make your triangle a little bit bigger. This one is X, this one is six, this one is five. And the one across from the 90 is your C. So we have X squared plus five squared equals six squared. Five squared is 25, six squared is 36. To solve for X, you're gonna subtract 25. You get X squared equals 11. Take the square root, 11 will not break down, so your final answer is just square root of 11. Or you could give me the decimal. All right, 28, it says PC is one, WC is 1.73, find WP. So again, just to make it a little bit bigger, one X and 1.73, the only one that matters is the one across from the 90 degree. Why is that one the 90 degree? Remember you have one right beside it. So we'll do one squared plus 1.73 squared, and that's gonna give us X squared. You guys can use your calculator. One squared plus 1.73 squared gives us 3.9929. And then take the square root. and you get X equals 1.998, or in this case, approximately two. 
I do not care which answer you give me. That's perfectly fine. All right, two more. Same exact way, nothing new. Find WP. We're looking for WP. If PD is two, sorry, find WP. If PD is two and WC is three. So this one's a little different because it gives us this two over here. It gives us this two. So what you want to do is if this little line is two, so is this one and this one. So all of your perpendicular bisectors are going to be the exact same length. So we're going to just write our two over here. So your triangle that you're going to look at, again, I'm just blowing it up, is CWP. CW is three, they told you that, or WC is three. Since they gave you that PD was two, CP is also gonna be two. And we're trying to find WP, your right angle is over here. The only one that matters is X. So again, how did we get that two? All of your perpendicular bisectors are gonna be the same length. So PB would also be two as well. Right. So again, the only one that matters is the X, so it's going to be your C. So A squared plus B squared, 3 squared plus 2 squared equals X squared. We get 9 plus 4 equals X squared, or 13 equals X squared. Take your square root. And you can just leave it as the square root of 13. Last one. Find XD if PD is 2 and XP is 6. The one that matters is across from the 90. So that one is going to be your C. So we're going to have X squared plus 2 squared equals six squared. That means X squared plus four equals 36. Subtract four, I get X squared equals 32. And then we're gonna take the square root. So this is another one that I can simplify. 32 is eight times four. Four is two times two, eight is two times four, four is two times two. So if I multiply 32 or two five times, two times two times two times two times two, I'll get 32. So you guys can see that I got 32. We're looking for pairs, but this time I have two pairs of twos. That means I'm gonna take two twos outside and I'm going to leave one inside that I didn't circle. And then I'm going to put those together. Two times two is four square root two. Again, if you want to give me the decimal, that's fine as well, but it may not always show the decimal. All right. So now that you finish your notes, you want to make sure that you go back and do your homework as well as finish your quiz from today. So your quiz was on the stuff that you learned yesterday. It's multiple choice and it's in Canvas. So if you haven't done it, go back and do it.